So uh, I've gotten uh, started here just with my imaging. Um, I'm here at the L4 vertebral body, and I squared the end plate on the superior aspect, uh, obliqued the C-arm, um, ipsilateral, about 15, 20 degrees, and I've focused my attention right there on that pedicle. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture, please. Again. So the idea here is to come lateral um, on the, to dock this. Oh no, oh no, um, I didn't, you don't need to move it lateral yet. We can stay right where you had been. No problem. Picture? Thank you. So what I'm gonna try to do is dock uh, this. I've selected the bevel tip introducer cannula, picture? Picture? Thank you. I've selected the bevel tip introducer cannula picture um, because in my experience, uh, whenever I start with the diamond, um, I switch to it anyways, to be honest, picture. Um, so the idea here is to dock my um, introducer cannula right on that most superior and um, lateral aspect of the, uh, the on-face view of the pedicle. Um, and uh, the idea here um, is to uh, the idea here is to start laterally so that as you advance through the pedicle picture, you are not going to find you are entering the vertebral body uh, too laterally um, or anteriorly. Um, instead, you want to kind of be entering into the back of the vertebral body picture on the kind of most medial portion of the, of the pedicle. Picture? I'm gonna start a tiny bit lower so that I'm lower than the disc space. Picture? That's better. Shot. Shot. So what you'll see I'm doing is starting lateral, uh, trying to traverse through the column of pedicular bone from lateral to medial. And I'm also considering that cephalocaudal orientation of my introducer as well because the pedicle in this instance is pretty high on the vertebral body and I need ultimately to get that radio frequency probe into the midpoint also from picture a cephalocaudal perspective. Shot. Okay. And I'm going to take a lateral picture at this point. Uh, the purpose of this lateral picture is, as you can see, uh, my introducer is moving toward the medial aspect of the pedicle. Um, and I want to see where I am relative to the AP dimension. Uh, can you lower the C-arm? Oh, or that. Perfect. So we're getting there. I'm going to turn my bevel uh, laterally because Looks like I'm moving medial faster than I'm moving anterior. Shot. 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 Back to AP. I'd like to see how this is progressing in an AP position. You know, the considerations here are making sure that you keep the, the introducer cannula within the pedicle and not uh, crossing medial to it, where you could uh, enter the central canal or cause a radiculitis. So I can see here, this is looking really good. Still, the bevel tip is um, not medial to the, uh, to the 
to the ped pedicular border. I'm going to go back to lateral. I don't have much further to go, and I'm going to go back to that lateral position and finish on into the back of the vertebral body. Okay, so that looks like that could be it right there. I'm gonna take out this uh, beveled stylet. And uh, my assistant is passing to me the introducer sheath. So this introducer sheath um, has preloaded in it uh, the straight tip stylet, okay? Um, you could also preload the J-tip stylet, but that's pretty rigid and it can be hard to advance through very easily. So many times what we're doing now is using the J-tip to be, or the straight tip to begin. Uh, Jennifer, uh, this is Neil. Before you proceed, could you shoot a lateral of the cannula so that the uh, pain fellows can see that you're at the base of the pedicle? Of course. And that'll <clears throat> help them understand that Sure. Uh, there, you don't want to be anterior with this. So see how the, the cannula is at the base of the pedicle? So the J curvature is now going to put you into an ideal target. If you're too deep, you're going to have your probe in the anterior third of the vertebral body. So the, uh, what uh, Dr. Schonard is pointing out is excellent. So the, the stylet, the bevel tip, did puncture through the back of the vertebral body. Um, so there is a, an orifice there for now my stylet and my introducer sheath to get through. If I were to advance this uh, cannula further into the vertebral body, as I might do with a kyphoplasty procedure, um, that could make it difficult because it would create a runway for the introducer cannula to uh, have the tendency to shoot more ventral than I would want to. Uh, I want to keep the introducer cannula in the back um, 30 to 50 percent of the vertebral body on posterior to anterior dimensions. So keeping this uh, introducer cannula here, uh, the uh, the metal introducer cannula that you see on the screen as posterior as possible is going gonna, is gonna to help me in that. And while she does that, this is the generation two system. And this uh, has, yep. it has a little bit Picture? more curve. So you can see here, um, uh, what, what, you, what you observe is the tip, the radiolucent tip of that straight, um, the, the straight uh, stylet. I'm gonna remove that now, and I'm gonna place the curved. And you can see that the curved stylet um, is metal, whereas the straight is a hard plastic material. So this one um, can be a little bit more difficult to uh, advance through the first introducer uh, cannula. That's why I put the, the straight tip in first. So then once this is in place, what I'm going to do is there's little, uh, a wing nut is what it's called. Um, and I'm going to elevate it on the threads. And this will allow the J tip to come out um, without obstruction. The wing nut is uh, in assembly down because when it's down, it would disallow you from advancing uh, the J-tip beyond the tip of the cannula um, before you begin using your mallet, which I'll take now. So I'm going to shut. So you can actually see through the introducer cannula the, um, the silhouette of the introducer, the J-tip, within it. And so it gives me an opportunity to do some planning. You can anticipate the trajectory that that's going to take as it advances into the back of the vertebral bone. So what I'm going to do is I see that the J-tip seems um, that it may be, in uh, my anticipation, that it may be a little inferior in the vertebral body if I don't adjust now. So I'm just turning my whole assembly. Picture. Picture. And we can already see that that paddle at the end of the J-tip is starting to shorten a little bit. Um, and I'm going to look and see where I am on AP uh, to make sure that it 
it, it's progressing in both dimensions as I'm desiring. So my hope is that it's approaching the spinous process, which it is. So, and I also like that I can see now that it looks like if it continues on this trajectory, it's going to be right in that 50% uh, sort of position between the superior and inferior end plates. Let me give it a couple more picture. Picture. Okay, and I'm going to take you back to lateral, please. A couple back and forths as we finish off here. All right, it's really shortening now. This may be a situation uh, where I would use a J-tip in order to extend a little bit further. Let me see what happens in the end here, picture. All right, so that can't go in much further than that. Picture, back to the AP, please. And we'll see if, um, so my J-tip is deployed uh, all the way through the cannula. So we're, we're going to hope now that it is um, straddling or right over the spinous process, which it is. So this actually looks really ideal. Um, if you have a person who has a broader vertebral body, you may find such a situation where uh, you deploy or advance that J-tip all the way into the introducer cannula, and it doesn't quite reach the, the dorsal process. Um, and in that situation, then you could use a J-tip. Uh, uh, Jennifer, to, this is Neil again. Could you go back to lateral? Yep. and maybe raise the table an inch so that the fellows can see the entire vertebral body and have a sense of confidence that they know where the 50% mark is, because in the AP, you are in the bullseye. Okay, so... Uh, Shoot a lateral? I don't know that I have an ability to... to, uh, so to I don't have like a, a laser to point that out. Do you want to point that out, Dr. Schoner, there in your images? Uh, so I can't see the anterior longitudinal ligament, so can we raise the table or lower the gun? Raise the table, please. Just an inch is all we need, and we'll be able to oh, see the, the anterior. Oh, raise the table, please. Uh, or lower, lower the C-arm. Lower? Yes, please. Good shoot. That should do it. All the way down. There you go. There we go. So your posterior yeah. third. Yeah, looks like it's just maybe the the junction 30 to 40 percent yep. position. Super. Oh, okay. high-speed lead therapy. Absolutely. I wonder how this person died. So then what I'm going to do at this point is remove that J-stylet and place my radio frequency probe here. If you can see on the screen, you see the two electrodes on the end of this probe. So after moving my stylet, I'm going to replace the probe can we go back to AP, please? And there are some markings on the length of the probe so you know when it is leaving the end of the cannula. Thank you, Steve. And then just push it in, please. Center that image. I can see that I can advance just a bit further. Picture, please. And could you center that image? All right, so this is a, a really nice placement. In, in my opinion, I'd be super happy with this. In this instance, I would be choosing to use a seven minute uh, lesion time because I'm feeling that the position of the radio frequency probe, uh, probes are right in the ideal location. Uh, if they were any less, I would be choosing a 15 millimeter lesion. So when we do uh, ablations of the um, ba basi vertebral nerves, we always do a, a, the level above and below the level of disc degeneration. So in this case, if the patient were having uh, L3, 4 disc degeneration, modic changes at the end plate above and below L3, 4, um, then this would be the L4 uh, level, and I would do also the level just above in exactly the same way. Picture. We would go right above. Um, Picture, please. And if I do this uh, picture, if I do this procedure, um, uh, I also, when I'm doing the lesion on the right side as I've just placed, um, I would do, while that burn is occurring, I would begin to.
place my assembly on the left uh, pedicle so that it's out of the way of my hands um, and, I can, and I can move ahead in the procedure and be efficient. Fantastic, well done. Um, questions, comments? Great job, Dr. Lee. Yeah. Really well done.